What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex. In this video, I want to discuss why Ghost of Tsushima cannot fail. Now, this may not come across to you like I'm intending it in terms of the title. We can talk about actually both implications of this. I'm more or less talking about how really, for Sucker Punch, this game cannot fail. It cannot uh, disappoint, it cannot do bad in sales, it cannot just do bad generally, or this game, or really this company of Sucker Punch is going to be I believe in a lot of trouble. That's one. That's my intended way. You could have looked at it in a way more positive way, in terms of like, you know, this game literally can't fail. It's going to be so amazing, and we are going to talk about uh, that as well. Because here's the deal: I know some of these videos that I, I talk about and I do, I, I kind of blend the lines of like, you know, how how positive or how negative I, am I on this game? I'm very much looking forward to this game. I think this game is going to be a very very good game. I'm very much looking forward to it. This is a day one buy for me. And and more than that, it's a game that I do believe Sucker Punch has put a lot of work into. It's a game that I think they're going to do extremely well on. And I think it's going to be a game that, you know, is it going to be like The Last of Us for the PS3 or The Last of Us Part 2 for the PS4? I don't know. I don't know if it can be like, wow, like they needed to wait till this moment to get the most out of the system and it's just going to be this amazing thing. I don't know if it's going to be that, but I think we're going to look at it and say, okay. And that's ultimately the thing is that Sucker Punch is back, right? That they've regained what made them special uh, back in the infamous days, right? Infamous 1, 2, and Festival of Blood. When it comes to the negative thing, and so let's start there first, this is very much a huge test for them, and I've talked about it a lot in really all of the Ghost of Tsushima videos. I've mentioned that, like, this is a big deal, right? With the, I'd say, overall failure of Second Son, and of course, there's always going to be people that disagree. Of course, there's going to be people that say, hey, I love Second Son, and, and maybe Second Son didn't do as bad as you may say. I mean, you can definitely think that, and here's the deal. I enjoyed parts of Second Son. I didn't hate the entire game. I don't I don't think I hate the game um, in general general it was just such a big drop in I believe quality and just how good uh, those games were from even Festival of Blood which I loved and could have been considered its own game to now Second Son I, I really think Second Son really dropped the ball but First Light the DLC to it I thought was actually really really good so they were kind of iffy right there when I look at them, though, Sony is definitely in a spot where they are either going to win or lose, if you even care about you know the console wars. But let's even not say win or lose. They're going to be successful or fail with the PS5 based off of their exclusives. I truly do believe that because... From what we're seeing Xbox do or Microsoft do, especially with Game Pass and they're buying up studios as well, it does definitely seem like it. Like the, here's where we're at with the with the next generation of consoles. Sony is going to be looked at as, hey, you come to us because you play all sorts of different kinds of games, and we have this big group of first-party developers. They're all doing different stuff, and hey, look, they're always successful. They like There's something for everybody, and the quality is always very, very high. However, Microsoft does have their own stuff. Nintendo, obviously, is still always around, and the Switch is doing phenomenal. I love the Switch. I love all the consoles. I think they all do, you know, for what you're going into each console for doing, they each have their strengths, and they definitely each have their weaknesses, too. But Sony, they've been buying up studios. Studios. They're going to continue to buy up studios to get you know more just more under their umbrella that they can possibly get uh, to provide as many games as possible. We saw them buy obviously Insomniac to make them fully you know first party owned. Um, and you look at something like Media Molecule, what happened to them with Dreams? It's like they kind of like dropped off the face of the earth. Now yes, Dreams is a successful game for what it is, but how successful is it really? Because it's been in the making for like seven years. You know you looked at Media Molecule back with Little Big Planet and you thought like this. This is definitely one of Sony's top tier developers. I don't think you can even remotely say that anymore. I think they've become kind of like a niche, uh, kind of even like an indie team, more or less, from how long it's taken them to do it. And sure, you can love Dreams, and I love the idea of Dreams. But I don't think the game has sold like The Last of Us uh, amount of copies. I don't think the game is selling as well as Uncharted. I don't think the game is, is as popular as God of War or, you know, like you you recognize it as much as Horizon or anything, right? So it's, it's definitely something different. And when you look at Sucker Punch, it, it really sucks because Sucker Punch can also... I think Sucker Punch back with Sly, back with Infamous 
could have been looked at in the same level. I don't think anybody really can reach Naughty Dog. I think they're just in an elite company of their, literally not just Sony, any company, like any development team out there. In terms of that kind of genre of games, I think Naughty Dog is unreachable, other than obviously by them. But like Sony Santa Monica, stuff like that, Insomniac, even for as many amazing games as they've made, I think Sucker Punch uh, fits in that group, in that second tier group, which is still an amazing, amazing group. But this is the game to show it, okay? It, you know, everybody suffers through something. You're obviously going to have ups and downs in your career. And studios in general, gaming studios, they're going to have troubles, right? Not every game can always be absolutely amazing. Not every game can always do better than the last game, right? Uh, so Sucker Punch obviously has faltered a little bit. And this is the game that you can really say, or they can really say to us, like, hey, We've made some mistakes. We changed course entirely, right? This is no longer Infamous. We wanted to try something else. Maybe we got burnt out uh, of Infamous in general, and so we're doing something brand new, and we really put our heart and souls into it. And the game... Now, let's look at it from a positive way. Why the game can't fail. I mean, the game definitely looks very, very solid. Uh, I'll always go back to what I've said about that E3, I believe, last year, not 2019, but 2018's E3, and talk about how... Like, I liked parts of it, but I think overall, it just didn't look complete. And I get it. Obviously, it's not complete, and that's why. But it seemed very early in development kind of footage. And I don't necessarily think that jived personally with me. I still had very high hopes uh, for it before and after I saw that presentation. And even now, even as we've seen these trailers, I'll be honest with you. There's nothing that's entirely knocking my socks off with it. Like, I'm not, like, pacing back and forth waiting for the day that it comes out but I mean it's a guarantee day one buy from me I'm going to support Sucker Punch I believe in this game I believe that kind of the realism and just all the different things that they're doing with this game literally also how different it is and it's not like a Hideo Kojima different I think that's a good distinction to make too this game is very much not what you'd probably think Sucker Punch would do and I, I think they've even probably talked about that like you look at them Sly Infamous and now they're doing this and it's like it's definitely left field and also again like the realism and and, and stemming from history, but also the realistic mechanics, the fighting mechanics, not necessarily something you'd think of from Sucker Punch, but it's not like, again, it's not a walking simulator mixed with like a Hollywood blockbuster movie that Death Stranding is, okay? And and you could disagree or agree with either parts of how I just described Death Stranding. I love Death Stranding. I actually really, really love it. Um, but it's like, it's not something that I feel will alienate half of the gaming audience and then the other half will be in love with it which I think Death Stranding has done and that's fine that's just that's Hideo Kojima even knew that uh, when that game was coming out so I think Ghost of Tsushima is not actually a really nice zone because it is different enough where it's like all right well I maybe I wasn't a fan of Infamous maybe I didn't really like it but I always kind of like hoped I always wanted to like it I just couldn't and now this game oh it's trying to do something very very different very very unique maybe I'll like this and then it's also not insanely out of left field where it's like all of us the people that played infamous we're all like all right again like we know sucker punch we know infamous we know that they've had their struggles but we're ready to embrace this new game and we want this game to be good and also you know it's a video game it looks pretty decent we'll have to see in terms of like the story and, and the open world kind of mechanics honestly they haven't talked that much about it and i wonder if this is going to be a game that they kind of keep secret up until the game launches normally you know it's like a game like Day is gone. They really ramped up how much we knew about that game in the you know, probably like last three to four months before that game came out. So it's possible that in the spring we really start to see like how the world of Ghost of Tsushima actually works. I feel like we're going to do that. That may be the biggest like deterrent for a lot of people. But for now, I think the mystery is kind of like intriguing. I think the mystery actually is helping the game. So I feel like, again, like there's two different ways you can look at the title, and I definitely think both's valid, and I wanted to address both. This is a game that you don't want to fail. If you're Sucker Punch, it's a game that literally cannot fail for you because I think that takes you out of being considered an elite development team. I think that takes you out of being, uh, you know, I'm not saying Sony's going to shut them down, but you have to wonder where they go from this, and they'll always kind of be looking from behind as well. So I think there's a lot of like, mo like mental, in terms of like personal like things that can that can hurt them if this game does bad literally the people that work there the company itself i think there's a lot that can go wrong and that's why i think like 
uh, you know, they need to do everything humanly possible to make sure that doesn't happen. On the flip side, I think this game is in a really solid spot where obviously, okay, obviously the game can fail. Obviously the game can be bad. But I think for what it is, from a, a development studio that's had the last six-year history that they've had, I think it's in a pretty solid space. I think you, honestly, I don't think you could have asked for anything more than what you've gotten. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people are interested in this game. And I think that's the best you could have wanted from a studio that struggled with Second Son, went in a completely different you know, area with this game, and took their sweet time doing it. Okay, And I think that that could have definitely hurt them. I think maybe it did hurt them a little bit, but I, again, I feel like this is the best spot that they could possibly have hoped to been in, uh, be in, and they definitely are. So, guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? I want to make more videos on Ghost of Tsushima as well, so if you guys want me to make more, make sure you guys leave a like on this video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, but also, you know, let me know uh, suggestions even for Ghost of Tsushima videos. We're definitely going to be continuing our coverage of Ghost of Tsushima, and then as the game gets even closer to release, we'll cover it even more, and then when the game is out, uh, we'll do a ton of stuff with it there. So, lots of Ghost of Tsushima content coming up. I know people just generally uh, like my Ghost of Tsushima videos, so if you want me to keep them coming, I absolutely will. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all on the next video.